all eyes are on Chinese government because Chinese government has admitted that the Chinese economy is slowing down, but they have refrained from making a fresh commitment when it comes to a stimulus package. Let's discuss that and let's debate that and importance of a Chinese stimulus package for global markets and for Asia with uh, Choi Young. Uh, uh, she represents uh, uh, Mere Asset Management. Uh, Choi, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, given the way Chinese economy is uh, is now shrinking and contracting, do you think there is increased pressure on the Chinese government to consider a stimulus? Yes, I, I do think that um, uh, now the growing uh, concern on the um, growth has been uh, overwhelming and uh, also it's suggested by the uh, weak reading of the PMI as well as the disappointing uh, real GDP data in Q1 as well as the uh, real economic indicators in April and May. So I think the government definitely needs to do a little bit more and because Chinese economy remains largely driven by quantitative measures, I think there's some scope for them to introduce more fiscal investment and I expect that fisc these fiscal stimulus uh, package will be mostly uh, for infrastructure in the interior land and also in those uh, sectors that is good for sustainable medium term growth for example agriculture which can help bring down the full inflation and also some of the environmental projects. Joy, hi morning. What is the key risk now to China's economy then with the inflation being less of a concern? I think the key risk now really lies with the domestic economy because if you look at the three components to GDP growth in China, uh, it's basically consumption, uh, investment and also net exports. So net exports is the rebalancing between domestic economy and external economy, which I think uh, is happening already. As you can see that uh, contribution by net export to China's GDP growth uh, has been either slightly positive or slightly negative for the past two years. So this part of uh, contribution to GDP growth is no longer longer is that important to China anymore. But on the contrary, uh, for China, uh, between uh, if, if they want to achieve a growth for 8 to 9 percent, uh, at least half of the contribution will have to come from investment side. But in Q1, uh, investment only contributed by a little bit more than two percentage points to GDP growth. So I think this is the biggest risk for China over the short term, which means like a private sector or fiscal, uh, private sector or fiscal sector is not making enough investment to boost the growth over the short term. What about commodity prices? Because China is still the biggest consumer of uh, consumer and importer of base metals at a time when Chinese economy is slowing down. Do you think that will have an impact on commodity prices? Well, uh, in terms of the impact on the commodity prices, I think there are two effects uh, from China. One is the direct impact on the prices of those commodity, and the secondly is the indirect impact. So regarding the direct impact, because we do expect that, that there will be a fiscal stimulus package kicking in, and that should be uh, positive news for the commodity price over the short term. But however, I think uh, this positive impact is going to be limited because this round, the fiscal stimulus package is not going to be as big as in back in 2008. So I think the positive impact is going to be limited. And in terms of the indirect effect, it's totally linked with uh, how the other government is going to respond regarding China's easing now. So if China's easing can successfully trigger more easing in other countries, for example, in US, in Europe, or in other emerging Asian countries, countries, then I think the indirect impact on the um, commodity, global commodity price could actually be quite big. 